up until 1948, every single thyroid doctor was prescribed was giving Lugol's iodine to their patients for hyper and hypothyroidism. The, um, the thyroid needs 12 milligrams, the breast need five milligrams. I mean, I, mucus is incredibly, iodine is really important for all the mucus producing tissues. So sinuses, vaginal, intestinal, But the wolf Chikov, uh, they they basically used radioactive iodine on those mice, and um, and radioactive iodine is the medical form of iodine, right? With all the medications are laced, the the, uh, the anti thyroid medications are laced with radioactive iodine, right? Natural iodine is not toxic. Radioactive iodine is toxic. So they used radioactive iodine. They used tons of it. And what it did was temporarily the thyroid was saturated with iodine. So it didn't need to take it up anymore temporarily for like two days. Right. So they said that was hyperthyroidism, but they never tested those rats thyroid levels. So oh. we don't know if their thyroid, if their T3 was and T4 were overproduced. Right. They never um, did this in humans. It, it's so it didn't even show that those rats became hyperthyroid, right? So even Wolf Chaikov said in, in 1969 that it was a transitory effect and that was not even basically the, the study didn't work, right? It wasn't true. The, but medicine grabbed it, never has never given up on that. And because iodine is natural, of course. So they recommend with the medicines, radioactive iodine, something normal and cheap like Lugol's which gives your thyroid, the potassium iodide and your breasts, uterus, and then the men, prostate, the iodine, elemental iodine. So in the Hakala labs, the founder, he said that they did studies with one gram of iodine and they have not shown um, any overdoing iodine. And we are recommending maybe like 12 and a half, even up to 50 milligrams, which is compared to a thousand milligrams. So have you seen anybody in your practice like no. overdo iodine? Okay. No, I have not. No, I have not. It just, it's eliminated via the urine. There's always more chemicals in our water supply, in our air that we don't even know about. And I just think iodine is a, a safe, cheap way to detox and detox in the sense that sort of keep your mucus thriving. Do you think? Yeah. Um, I mean, selenium is funny, you know, it can become toxic. So it's kind of not like B12 or it's actually too much of it can cannot be a good idea. And you also, you don't need a lot. I think that an eggs, a carnivore and eggs and, and meat can get an adequate amount. Usually we used to, as a naturopath before I became carnivore, I used to recommend 200 micrograms. Now as a carnivore, I would max at hundred micrograms. If, you know, maybe on one of your tests, they come up really low. And then the Coke factors, the other Coke factors, they're in the meat, basically, you know, it's the zinc, the it, it's, it's sort of in there. And that's why the carnivore diet is so great that you have all these, if you're eating a plant-based diet, yeah, you're going to probably need some cofactors with your iodine in order to absorb it and synthesize it. But on a carnivore diet, I think you need less. Annotated and summarized. Easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points.